Good morning children. Today our topic is body movements. So movements are very very important for an animal, right? So what is the link between an animal and the movement? How movements help the animals, right? Now let us find the basic connection. So we are calling the organisms that can move from place to place or animals, the animal, the organisms that are still or plants. So we find, we take one specific feature to distinct between plant and animal. Animals can move from place to place, most of the animals, right? So you know that the term any from the animals, any means motion, movement, life. So movement is observed in living things at all levels, right? So you are sitting still, you are not moving. Just you are sitting still, rock still. Even then you can observe some kind of movements in you. There are so many movements happening inside your body. So many materials are being circulated through your blood circulatory system. The gases are being transported or exchanged. And even at the cellular level, inside the cell, so many movements are taking place at the molecular level. There is a movement of molecules inside your cell. Isn't it? So movements are found in each and every living organism including plant and animal. But in animal you see the movements not only inside, not only the cellular movements, not only the internal movements, even the external movements. Of course you may try to sit still for some time, it's one or two minutes. You can't sit like that without breathing. You will be giving some movement here. So movement of your chest, ribs, so by that you can breathe. You can't sit still without breathing for a long time. So you may be moving your eyes. If you are asked to stay still without closing your eyes, how much time you can? Only a few seconds. Then you have to close your eyes. You have to blink your eyes. Right. So somebody suddenly you found one ant crawling on your back or on your hand. Immediately with a jerk you move. So we can't stop the movements in our body. Right. So movements help the animals in what ways? How the movements help the animals? The movements help the animals to search their food. The first most important functioning that is the necessity of movement is searching for food. Animals they move from place to place in search of their food. So for that they need movement. Second thing is for protection. Protection. Why does a deer run so fast? Because it has to protect itself, right, from the tiger or lion which is chasing it. So protection is an aspect. Some robber, some thief, some decoy, somebody is chasing you, you will be running. So running to protect yourself. So protection is one more requirement, one more aspect for which you need movements. The third one, reproduction. So every organism, it wanted to produce the species of its own kind, that is reproduction, producing the babies. So for that, the animals need to move. So that is the necessity of movements, external movements. Right, okay. And not only that, you need movements in your body just to eat your food, bend your body, run, pick something, ride something, see at something, do something. You need movements all over your body. Right? So that is the importance of movement. So all animals, they move from place to place by different means of movement. Right? So movement is common in all the organisms in moving from place to place. But what kind of movement it is, is different. Right? You are not flying in the sky as a human being, just you are walking with your legs. You are walking on your two legs. Whereas you see a dog, a cat, a cow, a buffalo, four legs. It walks on its four legs. Right? You see a lizard, it crawls, it uses its hands. And it puts its stomach on the ground and slowly it crawls. 
and you see kangaroo galloping hops it hops right and you see a horse and you see a tiger lion you see a bird see a fish it swims with its fins bird flies with its wings so cockroach it crawls and it flies with the wings frogs they jump they hop right so this way we find that different animals they have different ways of movement because their moving organs are different so you can put a question why can't the snake just walk like a human because snake do not have limbs like humans to walk absence of limbs so snake it slithers right so why can't a lizard run like something else like a rat because the lizard it has a body very heavy and its limbs are very weak so only it can just crawl so that is the difference so here we have to identify that different animals they have different kinds of movement so the type of movement they do they choose depends upon their body parts so it all depends upon the parts that they use for the movement some use wings some use legs right some use their body scales like snake earthworm they use their body scales to move on the ground some animals have got very strong legs and some have very weak legs so depending upon all these factors they have different different kinds of movement let us mention what are the movements some animals they walk like humans they walk crawl creep slither fly swim right so hopping they hop they jump so many ways so now let us talk about the movements in human body right so human body is our body in our body we have movements we are able to perform so many things have you ever seen olympics they are the athletes performing different 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 task so to do so they use their limbs hands and legs right so human body it's a very flexible design we have so many joints that enable us to reduce movement in different directions so by that you can achieve so many tasks right so here we have the skeleton that means how the bones are arranged in our body so you know the skeleton is the internal framework of your body so there is the internal frame on which all the organs muscles skin everything is arranged packed on the base what is the base that is the skeleton now let us identify the joints the location of the joints at which places in our body we have joints and what are those joints and what is their function actually what kind of movement or rotation they allow let us identify some joints here let us see some important joints there are so many joints in our body just we are talking about the important ones right so here we have a joint that is a joint between our skull and the neck the head and neck there is a joint in the neck we find some joint in the shoulders here we have some joint with the hands the hands are attached to the frame here at this point right so here i give number 2 here we have joints 3 and here we have joint and again here we have a joint here we have a joint here we have a joint so all these are joints i as i told you that there are so many joints in our body but we are discussing about a few which are very important especially which are placed in our hands and legs that is in the limbs now see in the human body we find these joints let us discuss about each joint and their function and their flexibility you can try some motions before we discuss what are these joints and their functions and structure 
we can see just look at your body right right now you see that how much movement is allowed in each part of your body in your hands and legs just you can feel like you are throwing a ball now you are the bowler you are playing for the cricket team so now take a ball and throw the ball right or observe a bowler who how he bowls the ball you can see the bowler he takes the ball in his hand and he rotates its his hand completely you can see the rotation right so the hand is getting rotated at which point it is rotated at this particular point so what is the angle of rotation 360 degrees right so that means this particular joint it allows 360 degrees so now the bowler decided not to use this joint he wanted to use only this joint to rotate 360 degrees is it possible to rotate 360 degrees so as he is rotating from here he wanted to rotate only at this point he wanted to turn the lower half of the hand circular is it possible no only till here then there is no more movement here. It is stuck over here. You can open your hand till here. That's all. You cannot bend the lower arm till down. You may break the joint. So that is why where you can observe that certain joints are limited up to certain angle. They cannot be turned more. They cannot be moved further. Right? So you are doing your jobs with your hands. You are lifting something. You are keeping something at some height. You are rotating something. You are pushing something. So in all these cases you can see that you can feel the limitation of your joint till what extent it is allowing you to move. Right? So there you can find some difference in the movement. So that we can observe here. At this particular point you can see the hand you can rotate it 360 degrees. But whereas at this particular point number 3 you can't do that just you can bend only up to some extent that's all right and even your neck you can see you can just slide like this but you cannot turn your head 360 degrees as like your hand it's not possible and you cannot do at, at this particular point at your knees you can just bend your legs but again at this point at this particular point at number five you can rotate your leg to maximum extent right so now let us go to that labeling the names of this particular joints right so location it's clear to you you can see that where they are located in your body so now let us see what are these joints as i told you earlier in our body we have different types of joints mainly there are two kinds fixed joints movable joints here we are talking about the movable joints movable joints so what is the other type? It is fixed. Fixed joints. Okay. We'll talk about the fixed joints later. Now let's see the movable joints. The movable joints here I have given the number and I have shown the location where the movable joints are placed in our body. Right. So here the joint that is found between the head and neck is pivot joint. So it is a kind of movable joint pivot joint so the pivot is like a point on which another part of the joint is fixed so by that it can rotate like this so that is a pivot I can draw a simple diagram to show that say if this is the object now you can see that this is a one particular part of this joint. This is part A, part B. So now see that part B is resting on A. And it is allowed to rotate up to some extent. You can rotate your head. You can bend your head. You can rotate your head. So up to some extent. So that is allowed by the pivot joint. Right. The next one is the two. Number two, it is the ball and socket joint ball and socket so ball and socket what is this ball and socket why it is called as ball and socket because the shape of the joint is like a ball in a socket 
this particular point that is at the shoulder if you zoom it and see that there we have a socket kind of arrangement into which the bone is fixed like this. So, this is the bone which is fixed in the socket this is the socket this is the bone which is like a ball. So, it is called as ball and socket arrangement. This ball and socket arrangement allow the bone to rotate it up to maximum angle. You can see that I have shown you a bowler he rotates his arm 360 degrees because this particular joint the ball and socket joint it allow the maximum rotation right. So, that is found in the shoulder and it is also found at the hip region the thigh bone it is attached to the hip girdle by ball and socket joint. So, ball and socket joint is found in the hip as well as in the shoulder. The next one is hinge joint. Hinge joint. What is a hinge? You know the hinges of a door. Doors have hinges to open and close them. The hinges are made up of either iron, steel or brass. What do they do? They allow the opening movement in one direction. The hinges just they are like opening and closing of a book. They open and close. The hinge joints are found in the elbows and in the knees. So, you see your elbow it opens up to some extent that is all 180 degree. You can open your hand like this you cannot bend your hand still further more because your hinge joint it is allowing the movement only till here that is a hinge joint right. So, hinge joints are found in the elbows and knees that is the hinge joint. So, we have some more joints you can see the number 7 and we can see the number 4 these are sliding joints in your hands you have in your wrist you have a sliding joint here you have a sliding joint just it slides like that. So, all these are the movable joints, but we have some more joints which are fixed you cannot find any movement in them. Say for example, you are talking and you are eating you are moving your mouth you are opening your lower jaw you are able to make some movement over here, but whereas your upper jaw you cannot move because the upper jaw is fixed in the skull. So, your upper jaw is having a joint with the skull, but it is a fixed joint. In the same way, your skull is not a single bone. Your skull is made up of so many bones. These bones are attached together. They are jointed by fixed joint. So, likewise in your body you have so many fixed joints. right? So, here we are discussing about the movable joints. What are the major movable joints that we find in our body are pivot joint, ball and socket joint and hinge joint. right? So, joints allow movement. So, where do we find the joints? We find the joints between the bones. The collection of bones together called as skeleton. So, the collection of bones the framework of our body is called as skeleton. What is skeleton? Framework of our body. So, what is the major function? It has two main functions. The skeleton it gives support and protection to our body and internal organs and it allows us to move. So, movement is possible in animals it is because of the skeleton right and the support and strength to stand to do different activities it is possible because of the skeleton. Now, let us see some important parts of the skeleton and their functions. 